Oh hell yes, people. You know what time it is. We're gonna do this one Red Dawn style. Welcome to the AK-47. Hello, I'm Raging Amish, and this is the AK-47 in Black Ops. Wolverines! Yeah, I think some of you knew that was coming. I'm a child of the 80s and 90s. How could I not bring up Red Dawn? Anyway, it's time for me to finally get to the AK-47. This is one of those guns that needs no introduction. Over the years, we have seen countless variants of this infamous rifle. But at the end of the day, everyone knows about the rugged, proven, and powerful AK-47. As one would hope, the gun has translated well into the game. The AK is one of the best all-around weapons Black Ops has to offer. Unlocked at level 38, this rifle is available rather late in the prestige. Keep this in mind if you would like to play with the AK-47. You will need to be at a relatively high level to equip said gun in your loadout. As you would expect, the AK is fully automatic, with an above average fire rate of 750 RPM. Sadly, you won't quite match guns like the FAMAS or AUG in terms of fire rate. Fear not, however. The AK makes up for this loss in many ways. Anyway, as is standard on the assault rifles, the AK has a healthy 30 round mag. What can I say? 30 bullets is plenty. Extended mags is far from a necessity. The large mag also means the ammo loadout is good at 120 rounds. Scavenger isn't needed, so you have flexibility when picking your blue perk. Moving on, each bullet does 40 to 30 damage. The AK will require three shots to kill up close and four at a distance. If you're precise and manage to hit the head, you'll reduce the number of shots to kill by one at all ranges. Where does the damage drop off start, you may ask? Well, on the AK, you start to see your bullets weaken at about 37 and a half meters, which is typical for the assault rifles. In short and medium range combat, the AK will be a reliable three hit kill. The four hit kill will only apply in long range combat. So far, I must say that I'm quite impressed by what the AK-47 can do. I think it's remarkable how good the gun is across the board. I haven't listed one bad stat yet, and I'm not going to either. Somehow I don't believe him. Okay, maybe I'm going to list a few middle of the road statistics, but I stand by what I said. This gun is solid and definitely one of the best all-purpose guns in the game. With that said, Back to the review. Like most of its brethren, the AK-47 has medium penetration power. You will be able to penetrate thin obstacles with ease. However, thick barriers will definitely be a problem. Bear this in mind when picking your battles. The AK also features the standard assault rifle crosshairs. In close quarter combat, hip firing is very effective and will save you in a lot of battles. But once you get to medium range combat, I'd advise aiming down the sight. I know I'm contradicting what you see in the movies, but it's true. Aiming down the sight is a good thing. What? Anyway, the switch times on the AK come in as follows. The gun raises in .95 seconds and drops in .6 seconds. The drop time is good, but the raise time is at best okay. Keep this in mind if you like the hardcore game types. A slow raise time can potentially get you killed in said game mode. The raise time is unforgiving, but the aim down sight time, thankfully, is good. The AK-47 has an ADS time of a quarter second. I don't have much to say. It's the typical assault rifle aim down sight time. I think you'll find that Slate of Hand Pro really isn't needed. Excellent. Up next is the reloads. On the AK, you're looking at a 2.5 second reload by default, or a 3.2 second reload if the mag is empty. In either case, the bullets enter the chamber at the one and three quarter second mark. To be perfectly honest, these are yet again more stats that aren't great, but aren't horrible either. The reloads are quick enough that I honestly didn't find them to be an issue. Picking Slate a hand will definitely improve the gun's performance overall, but in all honesty, the perk isn't necessary. I think the reloads are fine as is. With the reloads done, the next item to cover is the gun's recoil. Thankfully, this is one of the better features on the AK-47. The kick is overall low and easy to manage. 
to start the recoil profile comes in with the value of 60 upwards 60 to the left 60 to the right and 30 downwards as the numbers suggest the AK's kick will have a net upwards direction countering the recoil profile is a center speed of 1500 this may not sound great but it'll get the job done the recoil profile is relatively low so 1500 is plenty to give you a comparison, the AK has the exact same amount of kick as the Commando. Gah. No, not that Commando. I love you, Infinity Ward, but that perk still plagues my nightmares. What the hell were you thinking? It's already been confirmed, people. Commando won't be in Modern Warfare 3. And all I can say is thank you, Infinity Ward. So, back to the review. Here's my take on the kick. The gun will definitely move on you, but it's not hard to manage. The recoil is symmetric, which really makes the gun overall easier to handle. At most, you should have to press slightly forward on the analog stick. And yes, I did say forward. I play with an inverted Y axis. If you still aren't convinced that the recoil is easy to manage, the AK has one more trick up its sleeve for handling the kick. On this gun, the irons are incredibly clear. You will not need a sight because these irons are very clean. Picking a sight is a waste of your attachment slot. While we're on the topic of recoil, I should be fair, however, and mention a unique quirk of the AK's kick. Between each shot, the gun lurches up and down. I assure you, this is a purely visual kick, just like in Modern Warfare 2. The shots you fire are really quite accurate. So, with the recoil done, let's move on to the attachments. Some of them are amazing, others are, well, not so amazing. And frankly, I've got to cover them all. Do you really want to know this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Extended mags. This attachment ups the capacity to 45 rounds. The AK-47 is one of the best weapons in the game in terms of general combat. This attachment makes the gun even better. The high capacity reduces the number of times you have to reload which allows you to be far more aggressive overall. I won't call this the best attachment for the AK, but it's up there. Try coupling extended mags with steady aim. You can have some crazy fun firing from the hip. Dual mags. Both of the magazine altering attachments are gloriously solid on the AK-47. Dual mags makes every other reload a bit quicker and offers two additional starting mags. The alternating quick reloads are a nice bonus, but won't really make all that significant of an impact. What stands out to me is the extra starting mags. If you honestly find that you have ammo issues with the AK-47, I would advise picking dual mags before you even consider wasting your blue perk on scavenger. Red dot sight, reflex sight. I'm not even going to bother dancing around it. You should never, ever use either of these sights on the AK-47. So what's up your ass? As I've said before, the irons are rock solid. Throwing on one of these sights is a waste of your attachment slot. I will be the first one to tell you that I like the red dot sights on most guns. The attachment generally will help you be more precise, but on this gun, I make an exception. The irons are your best sight, plain and simple. Suppressor. Unlike the sights, the suppressor is quite possibly the best attachment on the AK-47. It pains me to admit that because I do not like promoting the stealthy playstyle, but it's 100% true. You won't pop up on radar when you fire your rifle, and this comes at the minor cost of losing some of your 3 hit kill range. Hiding your position from the enemy is a powerful tool. The suppressor will save your life in a lot of situations. ACOG Scope Next Infrared Scope Oh, for the love of... Next! Master Key. Oh, come on, you've got to be kidding me. All right, you know what? Never mind. Next! Flamethrower. I know I'm starting to sound like I'm completely full of hate, but this is yet another horrible attachment. The flamethrower is a glorified candle. All that hate's going to burn you up, kid. Keeps me warm. Grenade Launcher. Finally, a useful attachment. I love how the grenade launcher fits on the AK. Like I said before, the AK-47 is a solid gun across the board, so you really do have the luxury to pick an attachment that will make the gun even more powerful. This attachment will come in handy in so many ways. 
If you play on the move, you will tend to find enemies who are just out of sight waiting for you to enter their crosshairs. Instead of playing by the camper's rules, you can pull out the grenade launcher and obliterate your foes. I don't want to oversell the grenade launcher. You only get two grenades and the explosions are kind of weak, but that's only a minor setback. I think you will be amazed at how well the grenade launcher fits on the AK. The attachment becomes an extension of your playstyle that really opens up the rifle's capabilities. Magnificent, isn't it? With the grenade launcher done, let's get into the perks. For the blue tier, I must say I'm split between Ghost, Flak Jacket, and Hardline. Ghost is good for the stealthy playstyle, Flak Jacket is best for objective game modes, and Hardline is the best option for the aggressive player. You really can't go wrong if you pick one of these three. For the red perk, I'm honestly all over the place. My first choice is Hardened. The reduced flinch from the pro version combined with higher bullet penetration will win you a lot of one-on-one -on -one fights. I also like Steady Aim. The quick raise time after sprinting and smaller crosshairs make for a good rushing class. Slate of Hand is yet another solid choice, as it is on pretty much any gun. Quicker reloads and a quicker ADS time are always good things. Finally, Warlord is the last solid fit. You can combine the suppressor with a magazine altering attachment and really have some fun. I will say this however, please, please do not pick Scout. That perk does not fit the AK at all. I'm told if you pick Scout on the AK, a hand will reach out of your TV screen and smack you across the face. For the green tier, I honestly am split between Tack Mask and Hacker. Tack Mask is really good when coupled with Flak Jacket. You can be a mobile powerhouse, especially if you use Hardened. Hacker, on the other hand, is a better fit for Hardline or Ghost. Claymores and motion sensors are everywhere in Black Ops. Hacker provides you with information as to your enemy's whereabouts, and let's face it, information is power. When playing with a good all-purpose weapon like the AK, I find Hacker to be invaluable. So with the perks done, that means I have to bring this review to a close. Normally this is where I go into zombies, but oddly enough the AK-47 isn't there. I had to double and then triple check to make sure I got that right, but indeed it's true. Treyarch did not include the AK-47 in zombies. Uh, don't give me that crap. It's a shame, really. I can't be the only one who wanted to yell Wolverines after every round. Oh well, I guess a guy can dream. Overall, the AK-47 is one of the best weapons in the game. The decent rate of fire combined with high power and low kick is something that's hard to come by. Okay, okay. Maybe it's not that hard to come by, and lord knows that list of solid weapons could be longer. But still, I think the point stands. The AK-47 is a good gun. If you're a fan of Black Ops, this is one weapon you don't want to pass on. That concludes my review of the AK-47. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll join me next time, where I'll be covering the China Lake. Pray for me, folks. This isn't going to be pretty. Until then, I give you my best regards from Amish country. Cheers, folks.